after being tasered by police in the uh, English Midlands. And um, according to witness reports, he was tasered multiple times, um, even when he was on the floor. And according to at least one witness, he was kicked by police when he was on the floor. Now, this whole incident is subject to a investigation to see exactly uh, what happened. And we hope the truth of whatever happened will come out. Uh, but what I want to talk today about is uh, the whole arming of police, the whole police state structure that is emerging all over the world, in which the use of tasers and the deployment of tasers is a significant part. It's said that we should support the police. No, we shouldn't. We should support the police who act with integrity and fairness and justice and treat everyone the same and seek to do a job of helping, supporting and protecting the community. Those sorts of police officers absolutely uh, should be supported. Now, question. But not all police officers are like that. Some of them, increasing numbers of them from where I'm observing around the world, have psychopathic tendencies. And this mentality is being given tasers and other weaponry in the same way as genuine police officers are. And what should be happening, of course, is that the, the system, the process, should be filtering out those uh, psychopathic personalities so they don't get even near a uniform. But that is often not what is happening. In fact, as I've identified over the last uh, 20 years or so, there has been a, a, a blatant um, process of hiring uh, psychopathic uh, mentalities to the uniform professions to impose the will of the state and the hidden hand behind the state in an ever more vicious way. And, you know, if you are of a psychopathic nature, you want control over people, you want power over people, then you are going to be attracted to those uh, professions that allow you to um, use that power, have that power of the uniform over people. And these are the ones that are also, like I say, being handed out weaponry and tasers. Tasers that unleash 55,000 volts of electricity at a human body which operates through electrical and electromagnetic communication. The heart works electrically. The brain works electrically. The central nervous system and the muscles work electrically in terms of communication. And this is why hundreds now of people around the world have died after being tasered. Of course, that's going to happen in uh, cases where the electrical communication or the electrical activity, say, of the heart is affected by this unleashing of a, an electrical charge to the point where it ceases to function and the person dies. And, and what are long-term effects of that uh, massive charge of electricity hitting someone often over and over again? Because what we're seeing with all this is what I call the totalitarian tiptoe. Uh, the police are becoming more and more um, weaponized and people like me are old enough, in Britain anyway, to remember when a police officer having a, a, a gun was like 
a really big thing. I mean, it was almost unheard of because the police used to walk around the community uh, and um, go about their business without the need for firearms or tasers. And then as you bring in these uh, weapons, the way that situations were dealt with before, which might have taken a long, lot of time, it might have taken a lot of negotiation, a lot of talking, um, are suddenly dealt with uh, by unleashing a taser on someone. Uh, it's, it's not only um, psychopathic policing when it's done with psychopathic intent, and don't let anyone kid themselves, it's not on, on occasions, at least occasions. Um, it's lazy policing often as well. And this totalitarian tiptoe in relation to the taser has gone like this. First of all, they introduce them and they say it's only for trained firearms officers and it's only for situations where um, people's um, lives uh, are in danger or they're in danger of, 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 of being harmed, um, physically harmed. And then the tiptoe starts. They um, expand this to more and more police officers to the point now where the police federation that represents police officers in Britain is um, demanding that every police officer is given a taser. Madness. And what's also happened um, is that uh, their use has increased in terms of um, when they pull them out. We've gone past now, if you see YouTube videos uh, galore from around the world, we've gone now well past where it's just for situations where people are harmed or in danger of being harmed. Um, they're being used um, in situations where uh, people are just questioning the police about their right to stop them or or on what basis in law are they doing what they're doing, out comes the taser. And these are the psychopathic police officers that um, uh, react in that way, because one of the um, psychological traits of a psychopath is you don't question them because they are all powerful. They will not be questioned. They will not be challenged in their, their omnipotence. And um, so we are... Um, on a very dangerous road where the police are being uh, more and more armed. I mean, in, in America, forget it. I mean, we've, we've got police in America going around in tanks. They look like the military. They act like the military. They're armed like the military. And uh, the taser in um, the United States um, is, is less important in terms of what's going on than, than absolutely using a proper gun but in Britain uh, the taser is is very much uh, um, in the spotlight at the moment after uh, Daley and Atkinson's death because of um, the way they're being used we have a situation now in this totalitarian tiptoe where tasers are being used around the world on children they're being used on people in wheelchairs one, 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 one guy in, um, in uh, Britain was tasered by police. He was a blind man with, a, with a, a stick and they tasered him because they mistook the, uh, the, the stick for a samurai sword. I mean, it's not just that um, the authorities are um, recruiting more and more psychopaths. Uh, they're recruiting idiots. And, you know, I feel for the genuine uh, police officer, of which there are still uh, many, thank goodness, who have to work in this uh, new environment of recent decades, in which more and more of these idiots and psychopathic uh, mentalities are recruited into the police. It must be a nightmare. And, and just as many teachers are leaving the profession, many good teachers are leaving the profession because... Uh, education is such a, a, a catastrophic um, place to work now in terms of the state's imposition and the, the structure and all the uh, administrative impositions that go on and limitations that are imposed. 
So um, many genuine, decent um, police officers with integrity, the kind we want, are also um, leaving because they can't stand it anymore. Um, we are seeing this complete seed change taking place in the dynamic between the police and the public. And um, there is a reason for this, as I've been writing in the books uh, for so long. We are watching the creation of a global structure and a structure individually within countries of what I call the Hunger Games Society. This is a society, if you can imagine a pyramid, with the less than 1% at the top, the rest of the population in servitude and um, financial uh, um, struggle at the bottom of the pyramid, and in the middle between the two, a vicious, merciless police state to um, hold that status quo and to keep the masses um, in line and from rebelling against the less than 1%. Now that structure is unfolding so fast, it's, it's ridiculous. And this whole transformation of the police from uh, a organization that serves society to one that imposes the will of the state upon society is, is all part of this emerging creation of this uh, Hunger Games society. And if we allow this to go on unchallenged, if we allow the indiscriminate use of tasers to go on and the um, outrageous use of them in so many situations, then this um, Hunger Games Society police state is going to um, move into its, um, its goal of complete and utter control. Um, quicker and more um, powerfully than if we start standing up against it and challenging its impositions and challenging the old idea that um, you can um, hand out these weapons to people who are completely unsuited mentally to have them. You've, again, you've only got to look around um, uh, videos on YouTube with regard to police in America, for instance, to see that the very last person um, that should ever have a uniform, should ever be given a gun or a taser, is, is being recruited into law enforcement and into so-called uh, security. And they want them. They want those people. This is why it's happening. They want those people because they want uh, psychopathic mentalities to, um, to impose the police state to impose the Hunger Games Society control structure. I mean, you know, the kind of things that they, they are um, wanting these um, Hunger Games Society police officers to, to do, genuine people, genuine police officers who want to serve society, who want to administer justice and fairness, they wouldn't do. They would refuse to do it. So they want the psychopaths because they won't refuse to do it. They'll get off by doing it. And this is why this dynamic is changing uh, all the time. And, you know, whatever happened with um, Daly and Atkinson this week, um, uh, we hope will come out in this inquiry that's underway. Um, but what it has done again is just highlight and remind people where we are in terms of this uh, emerging uh, use of tasers within this, what I would call, greater police state structure that is emerging. And like I say, if you look at, um, you look at police officers today, compared with when I was a kid, they look like soldiers, troops, uh, and they're armed like them. And this is all part of this process of creating what they want, which is a world army stroke police force with a central command structure globally, which um, would have this military imposition of um, law enforcement upon the people, when the police forces that we've known in the past would no longer exist. They would be um, expressions of the military. 
And to see police going around in tanks and um, armoured vehicles given to them for next to nothing, sometimes absolutely nothing, often absolutely nothing, by the Pentagon in a blatant transfer of military technology to uh, police forces. When you look at that, you are looking at this Hunger Games society moving into place. So what we've seen um, this week is um, a reminder of where we're going and how um, people are being um, hit, often in the chest, uh, uh, brackets where the heart is, by these massive charges of electricity in the name of law enforcement, often, often in circumstances that are completely unjustified and would have been dealt with uh, another way had the tasers not been uh, available. And, you know, the thing about these incidents when people uh, die, uh, it can be said that they're bad for the credibility of the taser and the use of the taser because people go, well, what's going on? But there's another way of looking at this as well. And that is that when uh, people uh, are harmed by tasers and die after being tasered, then um, that means that when a police officer says to someone, you will do what I say, and I've got a taser, then people will do what they say, even though it might be outrageous and unjustified. Because when um, tasers were being introduced, I read an article um, by a journalist who'd watched them um, being used in a training situation, a demonstration situation. By the way, there are police officers um, that have issued lawsuits for being harmed um, in terms of their health um, as a result of um, being tasered in training exercises. But this journalist, he wrote this, um, this article and uh, the headline was um, close to the words, um, I'll do anything you say, officer, just don't use that thing on me. And so it's... it's um, in one way, incidents like what happened this week are bad for the taser in terms of people looking at what has happened. But in another way, psychologically, it makes people more frightened of it and thus less likely to question and challenge um, authority in such situations, but to go along meekly out of fear of, um, of being hit by this device. In my house, and I'm the only one that lives here, so I agree with myself, um, in my house, that's called fascism. And that is where we're going. And we're going there day by day, step by step, as police become more detached from people, more um, a force of imposition upon people, and more weaponized to intimidate people. We take it. Or we challenge it, the outcome for society of those two choices will be stunningly different.